In this video, uh, I'm going to show you how to set up your class development box for our um, operating systems class. So, uh, and this, this video is specifically for Windows OS, so I'll try and make uh, a separate video if you're a Mac OS user. Um, so, although in either case, the steps are pretty much the same. Um, so you have to, you need three pieces of software, um, and, and none of these are too big. You need Git, which is a revision control, a, a software management system um, tool. And then you need two tools for running virtual machines, and, and, and VirtualBox provides a hype, what's known as a virtual hypervisor uh, to run virtual machines in. And then Vagrant is a, a hyper uh, machine, a virtual machine uh, management tool, okay? And then uh, once you have that software installed, you just need to use it to clone a particular repository that I'll give you. So for our class, the repository URL is this here, I'll show you. Um, and then you use Vagrant to actually create and download and what's called provision your development box, okay? So I've got a fairly fresh install of Windows 10 here. Um, let me go ahead and uh, open up that URL for the, uh, the GitHub uh, repository. So this has a more detailed set of instructions for you. Um, so, um, so I didn't want to pop that up. Um, I'll set that as the default later. So if you go to bitbucket.org, uh, this URL here, so bitbucket.org, D harder, um, and it's the uh, CSCI 430 OS Sims. This uh, Bitbucket uh, manages Git repositories. So, so this is a repository that we have set up that has all the files you need for the assignments for the class and, ac and also all the files and scripts and things to configure um, and provision and set up your uh, dev box, okay? So, uh, and like I said, there's, there's more detailed instructions here, so I'll go through these uh, one by one. So the first thing that you need is, um, you need the Git client on your machine, which you don't have by default on a Windows machine. Um, so for all these instructions, you actually need um, to be able to, to use the, the command line. Now, if you've never done that in Windows, I've got, um, I've got a link here um, with a little bit more details of using the, the command line for DOS. Just let me show you real quickly. So um, you should have a DOS prompt or a DOS command line um, on your machine. If you just open up your Windows, what do you call it, the start menu, um, and if you search for like command, for example, you should find it. I usually right click on that and pin that to my taskbar, so I have it down here. Right. So whenever you open up a DOS command prompt or a command line prompt, it'll open you up in what's your um, what's known as your current directory. Uh, it'll open you up in your home directory. So there's some notion of your home directory and your current directory. Okay, so your home directory is is the place where you start. Um, it, it's it's the 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 place uh, I'm, I'm logged in as a user called Vagrant, and and this is my kind of home directory. Okay, that should be. Um, actually, if you open up the File Explorer, which is your file browser on Windows, um, it doesn't open you up in your home directory by default, but your home directory, uh, you can navigate it to it. You can go to your C drive um, and look at the same place, Users, and then your username will be different depending on how you install your system. So that's my home directory location from the... Um, from my file browser here. So I, I, I can get a directory listing using the dir command um, from my DOS prompt. So um, you should see mostly the same set of files and directories um, from either view there, okay? So the um, first bit of software that we need to get installed is um, Git. So you can go to the, the, the um, um, Get SCM downloads that I have a link there, and it should give you the option. I guess it'll probably detect that I'm on Windows systems like I did here, um, and you should go ahead and download that for you. Um, I usually just save it um, uh, to my downloads, so um, depending on, on what um, depending on what uh, browser you're using, it might give you the option to just run it automatically after it downloads, okay? So that took a little while to download, so I think I'll pause and come back once it's downloaded. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually download the other things as well, so we're gonna have to wait for them, so. All 
Okay, um, I finished downloading uh, the Git installer, so I usually uh, like to you know down save the file, um, so I have the install installer uh, in my downloads directory. So if I have to, I can reinstall it. Um, so you know, however you start, the, 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 all these installers are standard in Windows-based installers. So once you have it, however you start it off, like like here, if you download it, you just double click on it and start it off. Um, as I mentioned in my instructions, although it might be easy to miss it, um, there is one thing on the Windows install for Git that you should uh, change the, the 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 default that it asks for you, right? So when it comes to the line endings on Git, um, you should choose to keep the line endings rather than converting them. So I'll show you how to do that. So most everything else, you can just accept the the defaults. For the git install that it asks you so um you know you have to accept the license let it ins install at the standard location where it wants to install um you can let it use vim um so um so you can let it select that so Oh, adjusting your path, let it select your path there. Let's see, there it is. So when it con comes to configuring the line ending conversion, um, you should just go ahead and let it check out and, and commit as is, basically, is, is the best thing to do for a Windows environment for Git here. And then we'll just accept the rest of these, I believe. And then let it install. So I think the install is relatively quick here for Git. Um, put it over here. So after it finishes installing, um, I recommend that you check that it installed properly. Um, Although there's one thing, so, so you do have to be careful. So normally these installers, if they're installing tools that are meant to be used from the command line, they have to update the environment path. But if you have a, a, a terminal already open, a command line prompt already open, um, it won't use the updated path uh, environment variable. So you do need to, 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 to exit out of any open one you have and make certain you restart a new one after um, the installer is finished updating the path or else you might not get the um, um, you know the updated path and so you might wonder why it can't find the uh, the, the git tool so um, so I think we're almost done installing here um, we don't really need to view the release notes so if everything installed correctly for git if you open up a terminal um, like like I mentioned here you should be able to um, use the where command all right, and, and you should find that this, this was the place where it asked, where, where it, the, the, the default location where it wanted to install Git into the, the program files Git here, right? So it could find it. If, if, you, if you get a message like, I, I misspell it here, but if you get a message like it could not find the files for Git, uh, that means that either, again, either your path isn't correct or, or you haven't installed it yet or something's wrong. Okay, so it should be able to find it. Um, and if it can find it, you should be able to use to, to, to use the git from the command line. So, for example, I can ask what version git is. That's that's dash dash. There's two dashes there in front of the dash version. That, so it's git, and then there's a space dash dash version here. All right. Um, so if you're watching this video, you should have at least version 2.31 or uh, even a um, um, a higher version number. All right. So if you have both of those, then Git should be good for installing, okay? Uh, so you should have Git installed correctly then. Uh, the next thing you need is this virtual box, um, uh, which, which is a hypervisor that you can run on Windows, right? So if you know, open up the link that I gave you, you know, you'll want to select the Windows host because you're on a Windows 10 um, and, and download. Um, and save that file or run that uh, 6.1.22 version installer for VirtualBox. Okay, I already I already downloaded VirtualBox, so I'll go ahead and double click on that to start the VirtualBox um, installer. This one you should be able to just accept all the defaults, so there's nothing in particular that you have to uh, 
specified differently for VirtualBox installer here. Um, so I should be able to just select next for all these. Um, um, and you'll want to say yes, let it modify the network interfaces so we can get networking set up and then install it. And so also again, I think this is relatively quick, so maybe I'll wait a second here, um, let it finish. Uh, VirtualBox, as I discuss um, in the instructions here, um, is not really meant to be run from the command line. Um, there is there is something that you can, uh, there is something that VirtualBox installs, the VBox Manage, uh, but it won't add that to your path for you by hand. So you, you could go ahead and add CCOM program files, Oracle, VirtualBox to your path environment variable if you know what I mean by that. Um, but but we won't be using v VBox Manage from the um, the command line in any case, so you know you don't really need to do that. But but we can check that it installed uh, this tool. Um, so you don't want to start the, the virtual box after installation. So I'll uncheck that and finish it. Um, but we can open up a terminal, and I can just copy paste this. So if you copy and paste this whole thing, Control C to copy to paste into your um, terminal. Uh, is it Control V? Oh, yeah, Control V works to paste into the um, Windows command prompt. Okay, so again, um, if you do that, um, it should run. If, if you get an error message, you know something didn't install correctly. Um, and again, you should have version six point one point two two or some higher version number. Okay, um, VirtualBox is actually um, a, a GUI tool, so it also it, it installs a, a GUI based tool, so you should see it here on your recently added, or if you don't, you can search for it. Um, you can also check that installed by selecting that and see if the, the GUI tool starts up, okay? Now, kind of as a caution here, um, and I will later on probably re-enforce uh, this, reiterate this, but you shouldn't be managing your um, CSCI 430 dev box from the VirtualBox GUI tool. It, you need to manage it from the Vagrant uh, tool from the command line. So, so if, if you try and manage it like starting and stopping your dev box from the, the um, VirtualBox GUI tool, you'll have some problems. Okay, so, so you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be starting and, and stopping your dev box from this GUI tool here. Okay, but after you install VirtualBox, you should also be able to, to run that uh, tool. Uh, and then the last thing you need is um, this Vagrant set of tools. So again, if you open that up, um, it should detect. You, you want to download and install the 64-bit. Um, if you don't know, you know, so, so most likely you have a 64-bit operating system, unless, unless you know. If you don't know what that means, most likely you need the 64-bit, okay? So again, if you click on that, it should uh, give you the option, depending on your browser, maybe to run it or just to save it. Um, I've already downloaded Vagrant. So this, again, is a standard Windows installer. So if you double click on the file that it downloads, it should start up the installer for you. Um, So I don't think you'll get that error message usually. I, I don't know, my, my, maybe my internet connection's having an issue at the moment. So, so yeah, anyway, it should start the installer usually with no problem. And again, you don't need to um, change any of the, the default configuration that gives you all that. You have to accept the assignment, the license agreement, uh, let it install at the place where it wants to install, and then go ahead and do the installation. Um, Again, also, I think this one is relatively quick, although, you know, my machine's being a bit slow here. So if this takes too long to get started here, I might go ahead and pause and then come back. I'm going to go ahead and pause, and we'll come back once it's done installing here.
Okay, so my Vagrant uh, has finished ins installing here, so uh, we'll just finish up here. So uh, you'll get the message that you need to reboot uh, the system. Before I do that, Evan, you should, but um, there's a couple things here. Uh, let me tell you why you're rebooting. Um, so maybe before you reboot or afterwards, um, but you should, you should first check this. So if you're our Windows user, um, you should check whether uh, you've got this Hyper-V setting um, um, enabled or not, okay? So depending on your version of Windows, um, you might not have the setting, but if you do, you should uncheck it. So um, there's a description of, of this in here, so how to, how to disable this Hyper-V. Um, so the basic, I'll show you, I mean, I usually, you know, uh, open up my start menu. Uh, you need to, to go to the, um, um, you want to find the, the place to turn Windows features on and off. So you can navigate to your control panel, go to the program and feature, programs and features, and then find the turn Windows features on and off. Although I think it's probably easier, again, if you just use the search function, like um, turn Windows features on and off, um, you'll probably be able to find that. So that's maybe the quickest way to do it, right? But but yeah, that's, that's the thing you need is this turn Windows features on and off. And then you just need to, um, go down here and look and see if you've got Hyper-V um, and then it's under the um, Hyper-V platform um, and then you should see Hyper-V hypervisors, Hyper-V services and, and in particular you want to make certain um, I mean I think you should leave any things checked that are already checked except for that one so if, if you do have the Hyper-V hypervisor uh, enabled checked on there um, uncheck that and hit OK. So, All right, so, so anyway, just check that and, and, and disable that um, if you see that, right? Try and do that before you boot. And then the other thing for, for Windows users, um, you need to check if, if you have Windows hardware, Intel or AMD uh, CPU hardware, you need to check that you have um, um, virtualization and hardware support for virtualization enabled in your BIOS. Okay, so again, I have some links to this. If you never got into your BIOS when you reboot your computer, so when you boot your computer, usually there's uh, a message that's saying you can select some sort of a function key. So F2 is pretty typical. Um, although, if, if you look on this list here, you might be able to identify your um, hardware provider. Um, so some some providers use. Um, uh, the delete key, some use F12 or F11, so it'll depend, right? But however you do that, when you reboot, try and look for that message, hit the appropriate function key, and then go in there, you have to, you have to search. Um, so it'll usually be called something like VT-X or AMD. Actually, you first have to probably find in your BIOS menu something like a processor or CPU settings, and then it'll be under there somewhere, okay? So you want to find that and enable it, okay? Um, that's important. If you don't do this step, if you if you miss this step, when you go to start your dev box up, you'll get a, a pretty um, understandable message. It'll say something like, hardware virtualization is not enabled, right? And then that means that you've failed to do this. You have to go back and do this, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and reboot, um, and um, I don't need to do that, but, but you may need to do that. It, it might already be enabled for you, um, but but it might not, so you need to check that um, at least once if you're not certain. So, so let me reboot, um, and um, and then uh, so I'll pause and come back after I'm rebooted here. So, okay, after the reboot, um, I recommend um, once again that you check to make certain that it was installed correctly. Um, so Vagrant is meant to be used as a, uh, a tool from the command line specifically. So, um, so you know, if you open up a new terminal after you reboot, um, you should find, if you ask where Vagrant is, that it installed it in HashiCorp Vagrant, like, like it said, um, if, if you were paying attention during the, uh, the, the questions it asked on the installer. Um, and you should be able to run the, the Vagrant commands from the command line, including like asking for the version. This won't test whether you correctly set the hardware virtualization uh, in your BIOS, uh, but this will at least test that the, the Vagrant tool uh, was installed and you can run it. Um, 
And so again, you know, you should have version 2.2.16 or uh, a higher version um, if you're watching this video here. So. All right, so with that, you should have all the tools installed that you need um, in order to actually provision your dev box and run it for this class. Um, so um, the next two steps, four and five, um, we're going to be using those tools to uh, get the repository and then to start your dev box and provision it. All right. So the, 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 these commands here need to be run from um, a DOS prompt. So I'll open up a DOS prompt. Okay. So um, assuming that you, um, well, um, so the, the first step here, we need to clone our class repository. So I recommend that you create a, a directory called repos in your home directory. So again, whenever you open up a DOS command prompt, it'll open it up in your home directory. Um, you could create a, a directory from the file explorer, the, the, uh, you know, the file browser. You know, if you go to your um, home directory, which is in C colon users, um, vagrant. Um, I could like right click on here, I think it is, and say new folder. I'll call it repos, right? So that's one way you can create the repos directory. So again, if, if, if I look back, if I go to back to my terminal um, and look, I'll see that I have repos on there, right? Um, we, I could delete that and it should be gone now from there. Um, or, like I suggest here, I mean, you can use command line commands to, to create directories and files and delete them and things. So if I, if I did what I showed you there, made, it, made a directory in my home directory, um, so you'll see once again it's back um, if, if I look in my file explorer. Uh, but, but yeah, so it, however you create the directory, you need to create it and then you need to change into it. So cd means change my current directory into repos. So now my current directory is in, in users vagrant repos, right? If I do a directory, this directory is basically empty. There's there's like nothing in there, right? Uh, but here, from here is where you want to clone, okay? Cloning is, for now, you can just think of this as, as just downloading all the files that are in the repository here. So uh, it's just easiest, if you don't want to type all that out, to just select that and copy it, control C, uh, and then paste it in there. So this will clone, this will create a new sub subdirectory called CSCI430-OS-SIMS in my repos directory. All right, so it's, it's, it's downloading all the files right now um, and, and it's created a new subdirectory called this um, in my repos directory. Um, and then there, now all the files should be in there. So now you see there's a, a directory called CSCI430-OS-SIMS. If you look in there, there's a bunch of files in there. Right, or again, if I want to, and, and you'll need to do this for the next step. So, um, so we're basically done with step four. We clone the directory, right? So, so I can, uh, we can start our step five. I can change directory into that CSCI 430-OS-SIMS. If I can type it correctly. There we are. So we change in that directory. Um, and we do a DR, so you can see the files now. So this next step, you have to be, that has to be your current directory, your CSCI 430 OS SIMS, which I'll usually call your repository directory or your class repository directory, all right? And then we're ready to what's known as provision your dev box, all right? So by doing the Vagrant Up, so Vagrant Up, if you've provisioned your dev box, we'll just start it up. But the very, fir the, the very first time you do the Vagrant Up, It'll start it up, but it'll, it'll then do a provisioning step. It'll install all of the software that you need to do the development of the, of the assignments for this class, okay? Um, now, this will take some time. I'm going to go ahead and start this up here. Um, and I won't be able to complete it in my Windows environment, so I'll have to show it the, the, the result of this in a, in a different um, environment. So if you just type Vagrant up, um, what it'll do, uh, th this will this might take a while depending on your download speed and things like that. So it, it'll first need to download a base box which contains the, the base operating system which is a, a version of Linux, an Ubuntu operating system in this case. And then once it downloads the base box, um, it will uh, actually have to install all the software. So it installs the, the, the GNU compiler, the G++ compiler, 
um, installs the, the Visual Studio Code um, IDE server, um, and it installs a bunch of other tools. So it installs the Make tool for building the, the software, and it installs uh, code formatters and linkers and loaders and, and, and lots of other things, okay? So um, I'm going to go ahead and let that run, and I'll come back um, and discuss. But 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 yeah, you should expect this to take maybe more than an hour, you know, uh, hopefully less, um, depending on how fast your download speed is. But um, um, so so yeah, like it'll start off here by downloading the base box, like I talked about, um, and if that's successful, then it'll start installing stuff. Okay. So let me, let me um, pause and then come back. Okay, um, I've completed my my big my first bigger up is completed uh, downloading everything. Uh, I, I switched to a different terminal. Uh, hopefully that um, won't be too confusing. Um, you, you, know, you might not have this color coding coding depending on what kind of a terminal you use to, to do stuff here. Um, but yeah, just to show you. Um, um, so, uh, or, or just to walk you through kind of what to expect on the very first time when you do the big run up, uh, you should see it imports the base box, um, and it'll take some time for you to do that. Um, and then after that, though, um, uh, it'll start installing some stuff, and that'll also take some time, okay? But hopefully, uh, you, you might get, you know, a, a few errors or warnings. Uh, usually, those are fine. Uh, basically, if you do get a final message that the, the class dev box successfully installed and the code server is running, you, you're, you're probably good. Uh, at least you can certainly try it out. Um, all right. So that, that's basically that, that's what you want to look for um, when you're um, starting it up. Um, um, if you do have some problems, I mean, you can always just like delete th that repository directory and, and redo the steps four and five. So, so reclone the repository and try the va vagrant up again. Uh, sometimes there can be some hiccups downloading some stuff. So, so you know, a second try can sometimes succeed where where a first one fails. Okay. So, um, I want to just show you one or two more things then about using your class dev box. Um, so the normal day to day, how you you cleanly sh um, start it up and shut it down, and how you access it. Um, all right. So let me point out. So, so the 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 dev box is running a virtual machine that's running a version of Ubuntu with all the development tools that you need. Um, and it runs a VS Code server, which is a version of, of, of Visual Studio Code uh, that runs as a web-based uh, browser. So, so the way you connect to this, if you looked at these um, messages here to interpret these, so the, the Visual Studio Code server is going to actually be running on port 8080. So we we forward port 8080 from the um, the uh, from your dev box, which is the guest in this case. We we forward that from there to your host machine. Okay, so um, if this runs successfully, um, and if your um, uh, uh, VS Code server is running, that means um, you know, like I mentioned, or, or as I mentioned on the more detailed uh, README uh, instructions. Um, that you can simply open up a web browser. Um, so let me open up a web browser here. I'm going to have to, uh, just a second, sorry. Um, I'm going to have to, where's my, <laughs> where is my browser? There it is. Um, I'm going to have to open up a new window here. So, sorry about that. I should have had that up beforehand, but um, uh, if you simply open up your normal browser and go to 127.0.0.1 colon 8080, so the, the colon 8080 is the port number, all right? And again, this should be being forwarded, if, if your dev box is running, this should be being forwarded from your virtual machine to your host machine, all right? So if everything's good, when, when you go to that in a browser, you'll see the code server. Um, and uh, in a later video, I'll talk a little bit more about using the code server, but it should be up and running, all right? Um, so, um, to cleanly shut down and start up your dev box, um, you want to use the Vagrant tool command. So, so I already mentioned you should not be using the virtual um, uh, Oracle's VirtualBox GUI to shut down and start uh, your, your system. Um, so, um, 
So for example, if I if I restarted my laptop and I want to start up my dev box, um, let me let me start up a new terminal here. Okay, so um, so you know I would start a new terminal. Let me bring over my terminal here. Um, and normally your terminal will, will start in your home directory. So for me, this is my home directory in, on this machine that I'm running, right? So, you know, as normally, you know, you first have to change into your, your dev box repository directory. So if you follow my instructions, you change to repos, um, and then you change to um, your, your CS, CI 430 OS Sims directory, okay? Once you're there, you do the bigger, um, um, oh, I, I forgot, I, I forgot, I've still got my uh, dev box running, okay? So um, I should have done that first before I closed my terminal. So so if your dev box is currently running, and I should be able to tell if it's currently running, if I go here, you know, if I reload, if it's still running, um, it should still reload and, and have the Visual Studio code being responsive, right? So uh, to, to shut down, to stop your your very, it's best not to, to it's best not to just turn off your computer or, or shut, down, shut down shut down your host machine. You should first shut down. Uh, you know this is a virtual machine, so it could be a little bit picky about cleanly shutting it down. So, so you want to do a vagrant halt to shut it down, all right? From from your from your host machine, but this will shut down the virtual machine, your dev bot. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, right? So now, if I, if I try and access my code server, it'll, it'll say that it's unable to connect. So if you get a message like that, it's not running. If you think it's running, uh, it's not running for some reason. You had some problem with the install or something like that. So, all right. And then, as I was saying, um, you know, so uh, whenever you restart, um, if you open up a new terminal. Um, you have to just do the vagrant up again to restart the, the code server. So if you change directory to the repos, um, and then your CSCI 430 OSS.sims, and do your vagrant up, that'll restart your virtual machine, your dev box, okay? And this time it won't have to reinstall everything, so it should be relatively quick. Well, relatively quick is, you know, within 10 or 15 seconds, right? So there's a couple things to look at, look, look for here whenever you start up your um, dev box. So you do need to make certain that the port 8080 is being forwarded. So that's how you access it from your um, your browser. Another thing to look for, the very kind of last thing, is it'll set up what are known as the, uh, the, the shared folders to synchronize between your host and your guest. And I'm going to show that again here. So it should say that it's mounting the shared folders. And you should see that it's mounting... Uh, this is actually on the, um, the the dev box, the guest machine. So it's, it's mounting a folder called sync uh, to your repos CSCI 430 OS Sims. Okay, so this is how you can share files from your um, from your dev box to your host machine. Okay, but it, okay. So now that's running again, um, I should be good to um, be able to access my dev box here. Okay. So yeah, so it's running again. Um, so let, let's look at that uh, as a last thing. So accessing files created on your dev box from your host machine. For this class, you'll need to be able to do that. I'll show you why um, in, in another video where we kind of practice working on the assignments for this class. Uh, but let's say, um, so let's open up our code server. Let's open up a new file. So let's say create a new file. Um, um, and I'll say this is a test file, and, and I'll do Control S to save it. I'm going to save it. Um, uh, I need to save it in the sync directory. So any, anything you save in sync directory is being shared be, from your host to the get from your dev box to your host system. So if I save it there, if I call it like um, test.txt, so that will save the file um, test.txt here. Um, all right. So what that means, if, if I open up, um, or, or if you go to your terminal, 
and you do a directory listing. So again, how you do a directory listing will, will differ depending on what operating system you're using. So I just did a directory listing here, and I'll see. But, but again, this, this is my terminal on my host machine, not in my, in my dev box. But you can see there's the test.txt there. And I can access it. So I, I can see you know, the, the content of the file that I just created. Likewise, if I create, um, if I open up um, if I open up a file browser, um, so here I've got a file browser, I go to my home, my repos directory, and the CSA 430 OS Sims, and there, and, but again, this is my file browser on my host machine, the one that's hosting the, the DevBox virtual machine. And there's the test.txt, which again, I can open up here from my file browser, like with a, an editor, right? But this will allow you to share files back and forth. So you'll need that when you're submitting your assignments for this class to be able to get files from your uh, DevBox um, so you can upload them to the MyLeo online, all right? Um, um, oh yeah, there was one more thing before. I, there, there's one post configuration step that you need to do that I almost forgot here. Um, so from your um, code server in your dev box, um, you need to install the C++ tools and extension. So the way you do that is you go over here. So this over here is the, uh, the way you manage your extensions in Visual Studio code server. Um, and uh, unfortunately, you can't just install it from here because it, for some reason, I, th I think this might be a bug, but it tries to install, it always tries to install the, um, the Windows-based one. And we need to install the Linux-based one uh, for, for the IntelliSense, for your C++ IntelliSense. So I downloaded it for you, but you need to install it from a VSIX file, which is a Visual Studio um, extension file, I guess. So, so um, if, again, if that was too quick, let me, let, me, let, me, let me do that again. So if you go to your extensions, you pull down this three dots, which gives you some additional um, options, and you say install from VSIX, and then you should find it up here in your home in your dev box, so the CPP tools for Linux. So select that, um, and it should install, start installing. Um, it might not be, even though it says it's completed, uh, might not be completely done installing. Uh, you can always just reload if you want to like restart your Visual Studio Code Server. Just reload your tab, reload your browser, um, and um, yeah, as long as it says that it's not still installing after you do a reload, uh, you should be good to go. And and if you open up the extension settings and it can find the extension settings, you're probably good. Okay, you'll know whether you've got your IntelliSense installed or not if you don't if it doesn't automatically detect problems when you're working on the assignments here, which you'll see um, in our next video. Um, all right, so that's it. Here's some additional uh, links for you. You can find these at the bottom of the README for our repository for the for our class uh, DevBox as well, the, the same links, okay. So some, some additional information about using Visual Studio Code if you want it, about using Git, um, some introductions to virtualization if you're, if you're interested in our tools that we're using like uh, Oracle, VirtualBox, and things like that. So that's it for this video. I hope that was useful, and I will see you in the next video for our class.